right. YouTubers who committed terrifying crimes by Pixels After Dark. Any YouTube frogs watching this after the fact, if you want to, be sure to go check out the original video. First link in the description. Please stick around, though, for my commentary slash reaction. Feel free to drop a like and a sub. That'd be sick. Oh, uh, yeah. Pad, yo. Chat, no swears, dude. We're getting this monetized. Games after this. I'm going to take a sippy of energy drinks after this. Cheers. Hello, I'm Robert Cramp. We started the food chain series series by talking about producers, organisms that specialize in capturing energy. Five gifted subs. I'm so sorry, YouTube frogs. You're about to get cooked. Hold on, let me let me just let me just put that right there. Damn! I'm gonna give you a smooch, bruh. I'm gonna give you a smooch, bruh. I'm gonna give you a little smooch, bruh. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> YouTubers committed. YouTubers connected to crimes. Number one, Christian TG92. Chris is guilty of throwing it back in a circle. Yo. Oh, yo, Storming got a sub. Yo, W. Katrina got one. Dude, let's go. Mr. Lung got one. Oh, my God. Smoochy Woochie. Yo. What? Yo. What if instead of Cam on Deddy, it was Freak on... De no, what if it was Cam on Freak, and Cam just did a bunch of freaky stuff in my stream? Might stick around till I end stream, then? Well, oh, man. Tap me up, brother. Tap me up. Cam, thank you so much. I appreciate you. YouTube Frog, sorry. We got totally off track. It's okay, though. Okay. Here you go. Energy from sunlight or other sources, and storing it as sugars and starches. The happy scientist, aka Robert Cr I'm giving you a virtual fist bump cam. Oh, dude, it's this guy. Oh, yeah, this guy's fire. Sorry, I, I didn't recognize him immediately. Yeah, we've watched this dude's videos before. He's, he is sick. Romp is the perfect example that criminals can be almost anybody, even someone as unsuspecting as a goofy science instructor. Spending his days educating the youth, Robert Cromp was a scientist who enjoyed demonstrating the magic of the world through engaging experiments. This guy got my hairline. That almost anyone could enjoy. He wasn't just some random guy posting on YouTube either. He was legit, with some pretty amazing production behind his work. You could find him in the ocean, on top of trees. He would meet with birds and make glass sing. You can even find him on television programs setting the host on fire. All in his signature light-hearted and painless fashion. All while he kept a smile from ear to ear. But the, the truth is that he diddled 19 people. A smile that would prove to be much more sinister in the years to come. He murdered three Visiting people. Visiting his website, we can clearly Sorry, I'm see just the guessing. passion that Robert had for educating the youth. All of his teaching and experiments were primarily aimed at early childhood science studies, with relevant info to K-12 science education standards. He even has resources for science fairs and fun games for students looking to study and expand their knowledge in different fields of science. In his personal biography on the website, we can even see that Robert would visit as many as 180 schools per year, performing fun experiments all throughout Florida. He was a man of the people, Never mind, bro. Maybe 19 diddles was a little too low for this guy. Hearing his stat sheet right now? That'd be like me saying that Tom Brady only got three Super Bowls, bro. Nah. This dude, this guy might have triple digits. I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. This guy might have triple digits for diddling, okay? Give me the whole guide to Elden Ring. Yeah, let's go. I have not yet, Jack. I gotta, I gotta look into it off stream so I can have content to show. I meant to do that. I, I forgot. What's up, though, bro? How's it going? Continuously applauded for his volunteer work, selfless yeah, passion for education, and connection with children all across America. A connection that proved to be much more disturbing than anyone could imagine. Uh oh. Kane County man, 64 year old John Robert Cramp, was indicted in federal court Thursday on two counts one for possession of child pornography. I called it! And a second charge of receiving child pornography. The second of which carries a minimum. In September of 2020, Robert Cromp was charged for the possession of not one, not 10, not 100. I told you triple digits! But thousands upon thousands of pornographic images involving children. No. According to the affidavit of probable cause, Kromp admitted to using multiple online file sharing programs oh. to download images of child abuse material. 
Review of computers and electronic storage devices by investigators resulted in thousands of images and videos. According to investigators, it was apparent that he had been engaging in this activity for quite some time, which makes this whole case that much more disturbing. Robert was invited to 180 schools in a single year. That's a different school every other day that invited a sexual predator through their doors, masked as a smiling goof with a yearn to educate. This obviously wasn't the school's fault, although I'll tell you by the look of this mugshot, I'd probably nail the charge within the first couple guesses. However, it's crazy to think how many sick and twisted people can hide behind such innocent personas. A Reddit user even uncovered an old comment on his YouTube channel that takes a whole new meaning in the wake of this discovery. What? Just so you know, I've touched much worse in the name of science. To which Robert replied, So true. Damn sick bastard. Robert had the world fooled since the 80s and found a way to get in front of as many children as he possibly could. Who knows what Robert was able to do in the years he wasn't caught and the lives he could have potentially affected. I'm sure his passion for science and education are true. However, luckily for the rest of humanity, the only experiment he'll be running in the near future is how long a sexual predator can last in federal prison. I was about to say how, how much of an expanse his spoon hitting the metal bars in his, uh, his cell can create. How much of a sonic boom can this create? King. King, king, how many times can I hit this bar with my spoon before the, the, the prison officer tastes me? <laughs> His skeleton shines through, my bad dude, shouldn't be making so many stupid jokes, it's such a serious topic. Robert Kromp was sentenced to four years in prison in March of 2021. What? So there's a chance his reappearance in the digital world might happen very, very soon. Four? Unfortunately. Four? Before we continue, I- Yeah, good job, boys in blue. We really got him. We got him. That guy's, uh, that guy's not gonna inappropriately touch anyone for at least four years. Yup. More so thinking he figures out how wide his butthole can stretch in prison. That's uh, fire. I'd like to take a moment to thank this video sponsor, Surfshark. What you all don't realize is that I have to search through a lot of really weird websites when finding topics for these videos. I never really know where most links could bring me, so that's why I put my trust in Surfshark to provide me a little extra support when searching the web. With just a click of a button, I'm able to ensure that all the websites I visit are easy to view and safe to navigate, utilizing Surfshark's VPN to remove unwanted ads and monitor for any malicious activity going on behind the scenes. I'm also able to mask my location, allowing me to access content only available in certain parts of the world. All I need to do is just click connect and voila, I have all the world's news and articles available at my video. I can also make sure that any sketchy video creator search history is wild, it really is. Files before they infect your computer. Available on unlimited devices means I can work wherever, whenever. Why not just some of the most skip? content found around the internet. If you want privacy well, protection, contrary to popular belief, okay. Contrary to popular belief of Dark Viper AU, okay. I'm I'm trying to watch out for the the people uh whose content I'm reacting to. And I just feel bad if I wouldn't let their ad play through, you know. I don't know. That's where I'm at morally right now. Morally and orally. You know what I'm saying? Rolling down internet rabbit holes. Click the link in the description to try Surfshark for yourself. Better yet, use coupon code Pixels to get an extra four months for free when you sign up. There's no risk as they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. They already got paid. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. And now, let's look at some more YouTube criminal. Why didn't I think of that? Oops. Yeah, I don't know who that is, Jay. So. Dr. Yeah. Nicholas Bate, aka Nick Bates, was a young vlogger in the early days of YouTube uh -oh. that tried desperately to fit into the crude and disgusting comedy niche. Huh? He would make many different types of videos. Some were room tours, oh, mayhem? some were Pokemon battles, ben? and the most Word. difficult to get through were his skits. Most of which would always fall flat, making me cringe with every desperate attempt at a joke. I'm sorry if I'm sounding too harsh, but I'm not. He would be way too vocal regarding his poor health habits. He's admitted to not cleaning himself in the shower and simply refuses to brush his teeth. I'm trying to think of how I can um, 
I'm trying to think of how I can say this without saying words that won't get me banned, or that'll get me banned, bro. If you ain't cleaning yourself, bro, you kidding me? You kidding me right now? You doing it for a sport too? You serious? A focal point he made very obvious in his videos. However, every now and then we get a little peek into Nick's life, something that seemed complicated to say the least. Thank God they didn't have HD video back then, bro. Thank God. We learn that he has a little sister who made a few appearances in some uploads in an aggressive relationship towards his family. Oh, I just want to say again, big shout out to Cam again for holding it down, gifting all those subs. Shout out Tuli for grabbing a sub and Austin as well. Absolute Jesus, and I appreciate y'all a ton. And Bomber for dropping some biddies. Getting naked. What? What? On some occasions, we can see almost immediate impatience with his grandmother, and Aww. in a video featuring him and his little sister playing with sticks, the description reads, I LARPed with my half-sister just days before our sticks were tragically stolen from us by our douchebag mom because I'm too old to be playing with sticks. Dumb bitch. However, Yo, the what? one light that seemed to be shining in Nick's life was his girlfriend he called Anna, someone who he would fall in love with in all the ways someone shouldn't. Anna finna be like, yo, here's this bar of soap here. Come here. Chew on that for about 10 minutes and then come back to me. Visiting what? a live journal Nick created at the time, what? we can take a closer look at Nick's life. Uh-oh. More specifically, his affairs with Anna. Mostly involving butts and Kentucky's in existence? What? Anna was a girl he simply met in an online roleplay group who, Ugh. for a brief moment, became his girlfriend despite living thousands of miles away. Okay, that makes sense, dude. She might only be able to smell a hint of his breath thousands of miles away. It's hard to find examples of fond moments in their relationship. However, it didn't take long at all to see that things would go south. Around late- <laughs> Dr. Star's aha uh, moment? Hey, bro. Yo, oh my god, I just realized I don't think Stormman was there for that that one night. Or unless I'm tripping. Oh my god. Hey, he wanted dick, so I dicked him, okay? Out of the mouth of Dr. Stars. 2008, Nick would make multiple comments stating his confusion on why his online friends were blocking him. Why his life was suddenly taking a severe decline, and why people were talking to him like they were Chris Hansen. What? More vocally though, Nick would make countless posts detailing his breakup with Anna. Aw. Apparently, something happened between- Apparently, she smelt his breath from 4,000 miles away. ...between the two that caused Anna to think Nick was a creep, and pretty Aww. much cut complete contact with her once internet companion. Because of this, Nick would become wildly obsessed, and for uh -oh. what seemed like the next few years, would continuously bring up Anna in his quest to win her back. He made- Anna saw his British teeth and ran away. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got cooked by a ram, bro. I was mad I killed his brother. Uh, yo, what the flip, dude? Just a part of life. I have to stop myself from overcleaning. If I let myself give in, I'll wash my hands until they are raw. I'd be zoning out and I hate being dirty. That's real, bro. That's real. Thousands of posts to his blog about her. So much so that he found it more worthwhile to create a completely separate blog titled The Legend of Anna. A what? desperate attempt at getting her back by compiling all of his love into numerous disturbing journal entries reflecting the obsessive stalker he truly is. If this wasn't creepy enough, on a second YouTube channel named Constant Butts, Nick flips through a binder he made dedicated to Anna. Some form of shrine comprised of hundreds of photos he got from her online. Bear in mind, this video was posted almost three years after their breakup. What? Nick's obsession was persisting and it seemed to show no signs of slowing down. He wasn't stopping until Ah, British teeth! On a journal managed by Anna, I found an entry detailing her hatred for Nick. And oh. let me tell you, she did not pull back any punches. She targeted every weird obsession, every disgusting kink, and every off quirk behind Nick Bates before ending the page with, I hate you, Nick. You're the first person I have ever really and truly wished a slow and painful death on. What? Yo! You're worthless and nobody likes you. Even your so-called friends think you're a creep. Oh my god, bro. This girl is cutting deeper than anyone has ever cut this dude. And honestly, if you're so obsessed over somebody three years later, 
you either need to see yourself to a mental hospital or you got this shit coming to you, bro. I'll never be your friend again, much less your girlfriend or wife. Now, leave me alone. It was clear that Anna wanted absolutely nothing to do with Nick. Yeah, bro, if I if I caught a fucking whiff of his teeth, I wouldn't want anything to do with him either. I'm sorry, I keep making the same joke over and over again. I gotta let it go. However, the question still remained. What happened in 2008 that started this online obsession? Ooh. What could have possibly happened that made all of his friends look at Nick Timmy. as a disgusting creep with no sense of ethics or morals? Timmy, I love you. You have a good shit, King. Well, it didn't take long to find the 40 lines of chat logs. That huh? would inevitably change Nick's life forever. Uh-oh. Leaked by Anna was a chat between the two containing Nick's confession to sexually assaulting his little sister. I'm not going to show you the entire logs as they're very descriptive. However, I was disgusting reading how casually Nick described the event. Nope, I'm gonna say what I was thinking about saying when he when when the dude was first like he doesn't shower or brush his teeth. Somebody needs to put this guy down in Minecraft. It's out of Minecraft. They just gotta go in, they gotta spawn on the server, and they gotta hit him with a wooden sword a bunch of times until he perma dies on his hardcore Minecraft world, okay? Alright, cool. He even went as far as to laugh and claim his sister assaulted him, saying that she kinda coerced him. I'm really sorry that I've been approaching this case in a somewhat rude and aggressive manner. However, I hope you can now understand why. He doesn't even try to hide it either. In a journal entry on another blog of his, he addresses the question of whether child neural is good or bad, to which he answers with, you wouldn't want to hear my opinion on it. There is so much. I'm on deviant art a lot. Oh, and I might someday make a fan club there on Cats Inc. if it would ever get enough fans. The guy with the most emo. Yo, the guy with the most emo? Is how he signs himself? Answers with, you wouldn't want to hear my opinion on it. There is so much more that I have neglected to go into detail on. Two hour video essay? As I don't feel it's relative to this video. However, if you have the time, take a look you will start to forget that this whole story is 100% true. Anna would then proceed to contact the police and report this confession. However, this ultimately did nothing. In most cases, evidence from an internet chat log holds very little weight and won't warrant the arrest of a pedophile just because they said something online. There's just too much that's unable to be proved. As the years continued, Nick's harassment of Anna remained. Time and time again, she was met with unanswered fears. However, in 2015, someone would make a report to the police that they couldn't possibly ignore. Someone who hurt much more than Anna, Nick's sister. In 2015, Nick's sister reported the assault to the authorities, and after a brief investigation, gathered enough evidence to finally put Nick Bates behind bars. He made a really desperate attempt at proving his innocence through a Hail Mary throw involving feces. However, I'll save your stomach with the details. Look it up yourself if you're really interested, but I recommend you don't. In 2016, Nick was- Bro needs to give a jump scare warning for the teeth? He really does, dude. He really does. The fact that this is something that has been in my life before, ex of mine told me- now he and his sister, you know, gross. Ooh. Finally proven guilty and sentenced to serve six to 40 years in prison. Six. The possibility of him serving six years. Wow. Great job, justice system. Great fucking job, dude. Great fucking job. He has since attempted to appeal the sentence twice. However, both times he was thankfully denied. It was also not something she wanted since... The reason why he told me was because she was still thinking about pressing charges, rightfully so. Oh my god. Class It Up 10 was a channel owned by Jared Lee Loeffner, a conspiracy theorist who utilized the platform to discuss wild theories involving government, religion, and mind control. I wish I could tell you more about what they meant, but if I'm being honest, I have no idea what he's talking about half the time. He often references his want for a new currency and rambles on about different ways to implement it, all of which makes absolutely no sense. 
Apparently, they'll have new symbols with different meanings. And don't worry if you're worried. There's an active discussion on whether this currency should be distributed lethally or non-lethally. Personally, what? I think I prefer non-lethally. But, you know, that's just me. The more interesting uploads, however, are the ones where Jared tells us a little bit about himself. He identifies as a conscious dreamer, something he believes the world needs more of. He doesn't believe the government is doing their job and should be focused on- I mean, after that last dude got six year, or six to 40 years, and the first two got four years, yeah, I don't think we can really trust the government either, dude. Finding ways to implement his new currency. His ambition? To inform illiterate dreamers, and in a few days, it will be known that he's conscious dreaming. Whatever the hell that means. On the same day, he made a second post titled his Final Thoughts, giving a little more detail on his problems with the government. He doesn't trust the new currency, as they are no longer backed by silver and gold. He believes the government is controlling the minds of its people, and more interestingly, we find out that Jared was a United States military recruit. Huh? He ends the video with talk of a revolution and signs off with, in conclusion, reading the second United States Constitution, I can't trust the government because of the ratifications. The government is implying mind control and brainwashing people by controlling the grammar. No, I won't pay debt with the currency. Oh, buddy just found out about propaganda. <laughs> Damn. That's not backed by gold and silver. No, I won't trust in God. And then after this, nothing. No more uploads, no more MySpace link, crazy bro, this is a long time ago. Conspiracies, and no more ramblings. It would only take a few weeks to see why Jared's last upload was labeled its final thoughts. There was never an intention to post here again. 20 people shot, several at point blank what? range. 22 year old is accused of trying to assassinate Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Killing surveillance video from the Safeway supermarket shows the alleged gunman, Jared Lee Loughner, walking right up to Gifford, shooting her in the head what? from a distance of only two or three feet. Details On January 8th of 2011, only three weeks after his last upload, would Jared visit a supermarket hosting a Congress event in Tuscan, Arizona, and open fire, shooting a Congresswoman in the head and firing at spectators in attendance. Six individuals were killed and 13 were seriously injured. Some might immediately speculate that this was the result of some PTSD-induced trauma from the military. However, looking deeper, it's not hard to find that not only is this not the case, he was never even in the military to begin with. He did apply for the army in 2009, however was rejected under the assumption of being unqualified. What did surface in the light of the murders was Jared's struggles with drug abuse, something that seemed to start after a breakup in his high school years. It was reported that he began using a wide variety of drugs, such as cannabis, mushrooms, LSD, and other psychedelics, and soon after, developed a noticeable personality change. His classmates noticed that he began to become more erratic and aggressive. He was suspended from college and couldn't seem to hold any job for any meaningful amount of time. In the months leading to the shootings, it was also noted that Jared's parents began to become worried about his behavior and potential to harm someone in the foreseeable future. Because of this, they would even disable his car at night and fear that what? he might do something dangerous after everybody went to bed. The story really is a sad tragedy, as it shows the true ramifications that drug use can have on a person. Before, Jared was described as being a sweet and caring individual. However, after, no one seemed surprised that he did what he did. That's he developed insane. schizophrenia, and fell down a rabbit hole of mistrust and sporadic aggression. He lost everything he had and became obsessed with exposing the government, something he felt he had to do with his own hands at the cost of innocent lives. Dodging the death penalty with a guilty plea, Jared Loeffner is now serving a life sentence at the Federal Medical Center in Minnesota without the possibility of parole. Taking a look at Jared's channel one last time, we can find something rather unnerving. Under his playlist, we can find one album titled Favorites, holding only one video. One of him burning the American flag with the song Bodies playing in the background.
In early That's 2006. Fucking insane, bro. What he do? He killed six people and seriously injured 13. What's up, Iron King? How's it going, goat? A programmer by the handle Carl H would create a Reddit account and became the. All right, what's up with the happy chippy music right now? Dun, 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 What's up with the Sims Builder fucking music playing right now, huh? Notorious for helping beginners learn the ropes of programming and offer helpful tips to those trying to enter the world of computer science. Especially at this time, resources available online were scarce, and having someone so eager to help a growing community was looked at as nothing less than admirable. Along with this, between the years of 2006 and 2009, Reddit searches regarding programming was the most searched on the platform. Damn. There was a market for education, and Carl H. knew he had what it took to become the teacher. He made a subreddit called Carl H. Programming, where he hosted a series of free programming classes designed for beginners on up, and was quickly greeted by a community excited to learn. They had almost direct access to ask Carl any question they had. Carl. And they would often receive support as Carl was active almost every day. He spent years helping those find their footing in the world of computer science. And to many, Carl was regarded as a selfless Samaritan. Carl. Even earning an award as Redditor of the Day. Something that was looked up to pretty highly at the time. In the replies to this post, Carl would go on to answer some questions from his fans to which he told us his favorite programming language, his personal heroes, and how his idea of happiness was the time spent with his friends and family. Oh, how his idea hold on. Of I wanted to see his he heroes. He told us his favorite programming language, his personal heroes, and... Oh, I don't know either of those people. My bad, bro. And how his idea of happiness was the time spent with his friends and family. Carl was truly a good person. What? Oh, okay. Soon after, Carl launched a YouTube channel under oh. his name, Carl Herald, cool. where he offered free programming lessons and introductions to the world of computer science. Saying this page was helpful to students at the time is an understatement, ranging from the core foundations of computer science to advanced projects that could get you started in building a marketable resume. His already growing community would tune in, and as a result, Carl's YouTube channel began to thrive. Yeah, dude, 33,000 subscribers in, what, 13 years ago? That would have been, like, 2011, right? 2010, 2011. That was crazy, bro. You were, like, like back, um, one of the, one of the, like, sorry, I'm brain farting right now. That would have been insane. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Is like back then when I like started watching YouTube in like 2013, this would have been crazy. So I can only imagine like a couple years earlier. Like you're you're big time, bro. Growing rapidly and building tens of thousands of subscribers. However, in 2013, things would begin to get weird. Carl seemed to go silent. His digital footprint went blank, and between his Reddit account, YouTube channel, and website no additional posts were ever made. This seemed extremely odd and worrisome to his community as this was very unlike Carl, especially without any notice or warning. Up until this point, Carl was active almost every day. His community would comment asking for some form of update as to why he disappeared. However, as time went on, they would slowly give up, accepting that the fate of their favorite internet tutor would forever remain a mystery. Aww. Oh, how they must wish this was still the case. Uh-oh. Later that year, it was discovered that Carl and his partner Charles Dunavant were arrested and charged with the sexual assault of Carl's own son. What? Carl prevented his son from going to school, going outside, and cut his communications entirely from the outside world. They locked him in their basement and proceeded to sexually abuse him, recording everything and posting it online to disgusting communities and forums. All along, the community theorized that something terrible may have happened to Carl, but instead, Carl was the terror. I think about this often when interacting with anybody on the internet. In fact, I think about this often when interacting with anybody in general. Carl was a charitable man, there's no denying that, he donated his time to help struggling students learn profitable skills, and in the end, 
probably made a lasting impact on more people than even he would realize. However, Carl just couldn't help himself but be who he was. An evil, manipulative psychopath who deserves to rot behind bars for the rest of his life. It's a shame to say that even this will forever remain a hope that will never be seen to fruition. During the trial before official sentencing, Carl was found hanged in an Alabama jail cell. Pussy. Avoiding the 36 year sentence Charles served all by his pathetic self. Despite this being the end of the story, things do get a little weird in the following years. In 2016, a post would be made on the Carl H. Programming subreddit with the title, Hi, It's Me From Heaven, posted by none other than Carl Harold himself. He claimed that he managed to escape from prison and faked his death. What? Apparently, he was alive and would be hosting his website, ComputerScienceForEveryone.com again, available shortly. To those who, this was a hoax. who didn't believe him, Carl said he was safe in Russia and would post an official AMA soon. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, whatever afterlife there is, he's not getting in the good one. Yeah, he, 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 they expedited shipped him to hell. For those who had questions. This obviously caused quite the stir in the community, with many people posting <laughs> negative comments and almost everybody theorizing the validity of what just happened. However, as most expected, it was revealed that this was in fact not Carl, but instead someone who hacked his account, attempting to troll the once vibrant, passionate community of programming support. I mean, that would be a crazy story. That'd be some shit you get away with in the early, like, 1900s, you know? Like, oh, damn. Fuck, I'm gonna be locked up here for 36 years? Mm, let me just really fucking... Freak these motherfuckers out, make them think I'm dead because I hung myself or some shit. Then they're like carrying you away in a horse and buggy. You're in the back. You're like, Woo. <gasps> fucking scoot out the back of it. <laughs> they can't find you. What, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna track you down? They can't fucking cross reference like that, dude. You just go wherever. Go out into the woods or some shit, dude. I don't know. Do we have one more? Cultural Philistine oh. was a channel active on YouTube in the early 2010s, entirely comprised of videos featuring black screens and detailed commentary on various controversies and cultures. Dude, how in the hell do these people find these motherfuckers? For those who don't know, the name Cultural Philistine is actually an accurate description as to what the channel was all about. Philistine, meaning one who is uninformed in a special area of knowledge, is used to express the user's misunderstanding of culture. What? Hence the name, Cultural Philistine. This in turn gave him a platform to express his opinions on dreams, cults, antinatalism, and other culturally driven ideologies. However, what sticks out the most amongst all of these is what? his eight-part analysis on pedophilia. What? And the concept of adults having consensual relationships with children. What? Without going into too much detail, the series gives a user's personal take on cultural views of pedophilia and why nothing bad should inherently come from adults dating minors. An obviously disgusting opinion, however it wasn't presented in a crazed or disturbing manner. The channel was intended to try and give an educational counterpoint to many cultural norms, and in turn was presented in a very educational manner with various studies and research used to support his arguments. Although it was odd that the user seemed to have a very passionate take on the topic, spend Yeah, bro, you you making a whole Markiplier Let's Play series on, uh, you know, this... on being Dr. Disrespect, buddy, okay? Mm. Uh. ...over an hour discussing his debate, he begins the series explaining that he does not support pedophilia, nor does he have any pedophilic thoughts. Right, until they found his computer and his hard drive. He simply just wanted to attempt a convincing debate to an otherwise standard and respected cultural rule. The channel didn't have many followers. However, active in most videos was a user by the name Myrmidon51, who would oh. challenge cultural Philistines' views with their own rebuttals in the comments section. They were both willing to have a mature conversation on controversies and culture, and as a result, Myrmidon would become worried when Cultural Philistine stopped posting on the platform. As the years passed, Myrmidon can be found asking about Culture's well-being, checking in on him throughout the years, 
hoping he would confirm whether he was okay. He would write heartfelt messages and wish him a Merry Christmas, multiple what? times in fact. However, to his horror, a user Myrmidon never heard of would inform him on Culture's well-being. Want to know where he was? No! He no, there's no way! Sandy Hook. He killed 27 people. No! Zahodan almost immediately deleted his account. It was discovered over nine years after the incident that this account belonged to Adam Lanza, the 20-year-old responsible for the massacre in Sandy Hook Elementary School. No! An event that left 26 people dead, including himself, and most of which being young students. The discovery of the channel is actually pretty fascinating, as nine years after the massacre took place, a Reddit user would post the discovery of the channel to r slash mass killers, claiming the voice sounded almost identical to Adam Lanza. After diving deeper into the channel, it was not only agreed that the voice matched perfectly to Adam's voice, but it was also discovered that his eight-part series on adult-child relationships was actually a word-for-word -word essay written by Adam Lanza used for college applications. What? The actual discovery of this essay is nothing new. However, the fact that it was available on YouTube, narrated by Adam himself before anything even happened, was never known. Bro. It's just crazy to think that all this time, one of America's most infamous school shooters had a YouTube channel that no one knew about. It makes you wonder how much of the world's most interesting media will remain lost forever, waiting for someone to come across and make the right connections at just the right time. People quickly archived the channel and made appropriate backups, and very soon after, the channel would be terminated, marking an official end to Adam Lanza's argumentative persona as a cultural philistine. Oh lord, some late Oh, an Alex Jones fan is what I'm hearing here. That's insane, bro. I grew up in Florida in the early 2000s and vaguely remember the first guy visiting my school. Kind of saddens me. He clearly respected discussing with uh, Lanza a lot and even went his way to worry about the guy despite their difference in opinions. I can only imagine the shock he got when he discovered who cultural philistine really was yeah that's insane dude it's right actually getting an update on reddit saying that he was just trolling anti-nationalists years ago but thought that cultural philistine would grow out of that ideology because he thought they were just some depressed guy and because another anti-nationalist he trolled also grew out of it he only found Found out who cultural Philistine Philistine truly was alongside everyone else once the account was actually found and connected to Lanza. He doesn't want to talk about this for obvious reasons. Damn, bro. Whoa, I'm genuinely shocked with the first one. Thousands? Yeah, I'm shocked with all these, honestly. If I'm being honest, I feel like uh, Myrmidon wasn't a bad person. As far as I could see, he was just kind of caring for a guy clearly didn't know about the shooting he probably deleted the account to avoid remembering the channel the guy who shot at a school because like he said merry christmas and clearly worried about cultural philistine my dumb self almost abbreviated that i could be mistaken and misunderstood the misunderstood misunderstood the entire part ramadan was probably just an average person what is it Oh, no, not at all. I hope I didn't convey the message that he had any association with Adam. He was just someone who would comment, argue, and even kind of troll him a bit. He felt bad years later and wanted to know how he was doing. He had no idea who the channel really belonged to. Insane, bro. Damn, the first guy really screwed all his chances to leave a legacy as one of the most beloved digital age explorers. And for what? For God knows how many hours of degeneracy? What a shame. I clicked on it because I thought the thumbnail was the stop posting about Among Us guy and just to see what crime he committed. What? You're seeing the time I'm surprised that Natural Selector 89 wasn't brought up in this video. Uh, didn't even know him. Maybe in part two. Yeah, that's real. 
Smile doesn't always mean anything, dude. What? Personal smile doesn't always have good intentions behind it. Oh. You are such a great storyteller. Was not expecting the twist at the end. Thank you, yo. That's so real, bro. That's so real. Yeah, Pixels After Dark is an amazing YouTube channel. I cannot recommend them enough.